Welcome to the Shoot to Ill podcast, a podcast for any and all creatives. My name is Martin Depict. I'm a photographer, videographer, and graphic designer based in Los Angeles. Today, I want to talk about production costs and how much it costs to do a photo shoot and uh, the production and editing that goes into those shoots. So over the course of the last week, I've been doing a lot of personal projects for my Patreon, so Shoot to Ill. I'm doing one project a month on my Patreon, but... I wanted to stack up three of them this week, um, so I just shot three of them in the last three days. So I, today I'm shooting this podcast on February 20th, and I shot my April shoot on the 18th, my February shoot on the 19th, and then I shot my March shoot today. So it's been kind of crazy, you know, a lot of planning, a lot of, you know, running around, making sure that I'm not forgetting anything. It's you know, I've been getting up at 5 a.m. just to make sure that everything's charged and I have every and everything's packed up and I'm not forgetting anything. But <clears throat> nonetheless, it all the shoots went great. I'm really happy with the way everything turned out. My the February shoot, the BTS of the February shoot is already up on my Patreon. If you want to go check that out, it's patreon.com slash shoot to ill. And that February shoot is a studio portrait shoot with my friend Austin Spencer. Now, I was going to do an environmental shoot with that studio shoot as well, but it was raining yesterday and it was also raining today. And because I was using a rented camera, I didn't want to take this thing out in the rain and risk it getting damaged. But let's get into the production cost because... I wanted to originally put the production costs and, and how much I spent on these shoots on my Patreon because I want to be transparent with how much these shoots cost and not only that, but how much maybe I would charge if I was doing this type of work for other people. So I have a spreadsheet in front of me with my costs for the shoots. And then first, so, so I'll just sort of list them off and then we'll tally it up at the end. So first I'm going to read off uh, equipment for the shoot. So I already have a lot, a lot of equipment. I have strobes, I have lenses, I have cameras. For this specific shoot, I wanted to rent a high-end medium format camera, a medium format digital camera at that, not a, not a film camera. So I rented a Hasselblad X2D. This thing's amazing. I'll, I'll talk about it after we go through the cost. So the camera rental with two lenses, I rented it with a 90 millimeter and a 38 millimeter, and it cost me uh, $1,250 for a week. So I had it for a week. It gave me enough time to play around with it before the shoot and see how it worked. I ordered two V-flats from V-flat World. Uh, those were $300. I think they were about $280 plus tax. These V-flats did not get here in time, which was surprising because I ordered them at the beginning of the month and it you know, two weeks later, they're still not here. I ordered a parabolic rod from Stro Pro. This is an attachment and sort of like the poor man's version of a parabolic umbrella setup. I mentioned before in a podcast that these parabolic umbrellas can sometimes go up to like $5,000, depending on the brand that you go with. This parabolic rod system was sort of like a, a poor man's version of this to where it just gives you the rod. You can attach the the strobe to the end of it and put it inside an umbrella. Um, so I had to get a rod for this and, an, and a parabolic umbrella to, for this to work. So the parabolic rod from Stro Pro cost me $160 and the um, umbrella for the parabolic rod was $150. I'm not including tax in this, but we'll sort of, this is just sort of like a, a rough estimate. I got a strobe extension for this use as well because the strobe extension just allowed me to extend the head of the strobe and put it inside the umbrella while having my the strobe itself the body of the strobe my 8600 pro godox sort of be outside of the umbrella and that was super helpful just beneficial for weight and being able to move the light around with the ease that was a, another 180 dollars i bought extra bulbs just in case something happened and i and i was gonna and i accidentally broke a bulb so that was 60 dollars I ordered a beauty dish. Now, beauty dishes, I've skimped on them before. I did not want to skimp on this one. Obviously, there's more expensive than this, but I went with one that was $300. That was it for the equipment cost. I'm pretty sure I, I'm, I was confident that I had everything else that I needed. I ended up breaking a strobe last month, and I completely forgot about it. So 
I ended up working with three strobes instead of my four, my typical four that I usually have. So we ended up making it work and I, I'm still really happy with how everything turned out. So not a big deal. So we'll just, we'll just move on to the production costs from here. So the production costs. Now, my first shoot that I did was the car shoot. This took place on February 18th. And so I had a studio specifically for the car shoot that, let me, that would let me drive a car into its warehouse. And that cost me $875. And originally, it was only supposed to be $350, but I didn't want to just use like a white background for the car. I wanted to sort of use the warehouse itself. And that ended up being an additional 500 bucks, which is sort of, it was upsetting because, you know, you show up, you have the car and everything with you. And then, you know, it just feels like I got forced to pay that extra money on the spot. Wasn't happy about it, but it happened. No big deal. I was supposed to rent a, a McLaren from a friend. That didn't happen. So I ended up sort of going with the backup and found uh, Aston Martin Vantage on Turo and was able to talk the owner down to let me rent it for a few hours from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. for 550 bucks. So I was really happy about that. You know, saved some, saved some money there. You know, the I think the original McLaren that I was going to rent was going to be over a thousand dollars. So, five hundred fifty bucks. You know, cool. Like I ended up breaking even, I guess, with the extra money that I paid for, for the studio. I picked it up in the morning, dropped it back off, filled up the tank. I didn't drive it that much, but I filled it filled up the tank still. So that was a, another thirty dollars in just in gas, and that was it for the car shoot. Now, the next day, which was yesterday, which was February nineteenth. That was the studio shoot. Now, we shot this at my studio, so I didn't have to pay any cost for the studio. I think the only thing that I ended up really paying for was the equipment that I had already bought earlier, or that I listed earlier. So, And I did just pay Austin, our, my model for that shoot, 150 bucks. I just wanted to sort of pay him for his time. I thought it was fair. So not a big deal. He's a friend of mine. He did me a solid. He did me a favor. So that was great. I also, I also should mention that I had a buddy come out, another car photographer, Vito, come out and help me shoot the Aston Martin. And I was going to pay him, but he did not want to accept my money. And so I'm, I'm really thankful for him for helping me. He was, it, was, it sort of almost felt like a one-on-one -on -one workshop because he does this for a living. And he was just sort of they're making sure that I wasn't fucking up or, or doing anything wrong during the shoot. I, I'm very grateful for him, and I definitely owe him, like, a dinner with and some drinks or something, you know, like. So, you know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll double date with uh, me and my girlfriend and him and his wife, you know. It'll be, it'll be nice. Um, but anyway, so the today's shoot was the beauty shoot, the beauty and the glamour shoot. I've talked about this shoot a lot. It was one definitely one of one one of the more expensive shoots for sure. So the studio for the beauty shoot was five hundred and sixty dollars. It was great because it was like a white psych a white psych wall, and then there was also like some textured walls as well. Something that gave us a little bit more of like a cement feel. the The studio did come with some equipment that I was able to use, so C stands, stuff like that. Um, so that was super helpful. Makeup artist five hundred dollars. And then hairstylist, another $150. And the model was $700. So I got lucky with the model because the model was a recommendation from the makeup artist. And typically, if I was going to do this type of work, I would want to hire a model from an agency. If you're going to be working with an agency, a modeling agency in LA, you know that $700 is not what you would end up paying for a four-hour shoot. Typically, a four-hour shoot with an agency model is no less than $2,000. So 700 bucks. I was really happy to pay that. And, you know, our model, Jasmine, today, she was amazing. I'm really happy. And, and I hope to work with her again and, and uh, you know, her experience and how, how professional she was in, the, in front of the camera. Amazing. So that brings us to the grand total of $5,915. So let's just round that up to $6,000. So $6,000 on three photo shoots. Yeah. <laughs> Go subscribe to my fucking Patreon. 
this is all, I see this all as an investment. You know, I'm sort of doing this and, and I'm wanting to sort of learn and, and want to do this, these projects once a month for myself and also, you know, sort of like share the experience with you guys. This is a quarter's worth of work packed into three days. So, you know, it, 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 to me, it's worth the investment. Now, if I was going to be charging someone for the editing of this, I sort of broke the editing cost to 36 hours. Um, that's including the retouching and the layout that I'm going to be doing with the photos. So on my Patreon, I'm going to be doing a zine with each one, each project. So I'm going to be doing a mini zine of the car shoot, a mini zine of the studio portraits, and then a mini zine of the, of the glamour and beauty shoot that we did. So, you know, that'll be layout in, in design in, in Adobe InDesign that'll sort of like lay out the images to be a little bit more in like a magazine sort of format. So 36 hours editing and layout, I would typically charge maybe $150, $200 an hour for that type of work, which 36, 36 hours at that rate would range from $5,400 to $7,200. So, you know, thankfully I'm not having to do the 36 hours straight, you know, sort of like I'm, I'm splitting it up little by little. And not to mention that if I was charging someone for this, there would be a percentage uh, production fee cost. So like, not only am I charging the client for all the production costs, but there's also a production fee that sort of goes into the planning, the organization, the communication that I'm having with the client, all the back and forth. I'm sort of logging hours and stuff. But yeah, there's a production fee of 20% plus an hourly rate for any sort of, you know, any ad additional time that you spend communicating and, and planning this stuff. So I don't know, that, that probably boosted up to like 15, maybe 16K for, for the project if I was doing these three projects for a client. <laughs> that said, it's been a pretty crazy, hectic three days. I'm really happy with how everything went. Each you progressively got better and better, and by that I mean so I shot I, I sort of shot these in reverse. So I shot the April shoot first, I shot the February shoot second, and then the March shoot last. So I think that the March shoot is probably like my best produced project. Um, I moved the camera around a little bit more, obviously because there's more people involved. There's uh, a little bit more dialogue. My February shoot was fun. You know, I shot that with Austin. Him and I have been friends for a while now. So you guys get to see sort of like how we sort of mess around and how we work together in the studio. And then with Vito, that's more of a, definitely more of a learning experience for me as well. But you guys would get to see uh, and get tips from the man himself and also how he sort of is walking me through how to shoot this car with him. So it, it's uh, amazing, again, Really grateful for the experience. I'm really grateful to be able to be doing this. If the me five years ago can see that I'm doing this, he, he would be really proud of me. So I'm really proud of myself to be in this position, and, and I, can't, I can't keep saying that enough, I guess. So yeah, subscribe to my Patreon so that way I can at least get closer to breaking even. <laughs> Speaking about breaking even, I do sort of just want to clear something up that I talked about in the last, pa in the last podcast episode. I spoke about that man who sent me money while I was sort of like at the lowest time of my life. And I mentioned that, that he sort of like brought me, that he helped me out. And I think it, when I was explaining it, it sort of made it look like all my bills were paid off and like I was in no more debt after that. What I meant to say <laughs> was that I was in the negative. My bank account was in the negative at the time. And so the money that he did send me was enough to get me back to zero in my bank account and pay a couple for a couple of my bills. So phone bill, uh, electricity, all that stuff. So it was very helpful. You know, it was just a couple, a couple hundred bucks, but I, and again, we'll never forget it. And I look forward to meeting him soon uh, at that workshop that I'm planning with him. So now let's go ahead and talk about this camera. So the Hasselblad X2D, I've had it for a week now. It has been an amazing workhorse. I have, so some of the things that I want to talk about in this, there's uh, internal memory in this. So internal memory, I don't really understand why no other cameras are doing this. I think like some of the higher end cameras, like I think maybe phase one also does internal memory. 
I may be wrong, but maybe a Leica does it as well. But to have one terabyte of internal memory in this camera is pretty amazing. I I had my memory card in here and I never even took my memory card out. I just plugged in, uh, I plugged the camera into my computer and was able to dump the files from the camera onto my hard drive. And it was just like a really easy experience. The menu system of this camera, it feels like a phone. It's like, I'm just turning it on right now. And so like the menu system, it's just very intuitive. Um, the little menu up here and like being able to switch, being able to switch the dials, you know, like there's not a lot of buttons on this thing. It just feels nice. I think it forced me to slow down a lot. Like it obviously is not it's is not as fast as my other as my other cameras. So like auto focusing isn't as good. Um, but it does shoot 16 bit 100 megapixel files. So obviously the processing is going to be a little bit slower. Uh, the autofocus is still. I think this is still on phase detect con or maybe yeah phase phase detect uh, autofocus system. So it does pretty good for what for what it is i took it to a museum for my with my girlfriend on valentine's day took great photos of my girlfriend was able to sort of mess around with some of the low light capabilities this thing has like seven stops of ibis in it and so i was just sort of able to hold it steady at like a tenth of its of a second and get like a nice crisp photo out of it like i i, I don't have much to say bad about this camera like the fact that it's slow maybe is is one thing autofocus is maybe not it's not the greatest at autofocusing but it did it does have face detect so it can autofocus to faces if it if it can read the faces another great thing is that the lenses for this camera so this camera doesn't have a shutter inside the camera this has a leaf shutter inside the lenses so the lenses themselves are, are able to sync with flash up to one four thousandth of a second I couldn't experience that. I could only get up to one fifteen hundred of a second. And I think that's probably because my Godoxes are, are a little bit old and I'm not able to get the full power that I maybe was once getting out of them. So, but honestly, one fifteen hundred of a second without having to set your, your strobes to high speed sync. I think that's still amazing. Uh, I was, I'm not complaining. I think that that was amazing. I think for, being able to cut out ambient light in your studio, uh, being able to shoot outside with strobes. I think that's that's more than enough and, and amazing in, in its own right. So I, I really enjoyed working with it. Is it worth the money? I'm not sure. Because the Fuji GFX cameras, the cameras that are, are, are capable of shooting over 100 megapixel cam or photos, it also shoots 16-bit raw files it has better auto focusing really it does everything that this camera can do but it just doesn't have the pedigree of the brand obviously i like stylistically and like aesthetically i prefer the way that this looks and the way that this feels i you know i don't know I, i'm a sucker for sort of branding and how this how this is like just even gripping this thing like there's this notch right here on the back of the of the back of the camera and your thumb can just rest on there really well like that is just such a good grip I, I you know I don't know like is it worth it I'm not sure like the GFX cameras are not cheap either they're they're pretty expensive as well so in the grand scheme of things if I'm going to be paying that much for a camera I might as well pay the extra couple thousand to go with the Hasselblad I'm I'm asking around and 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 getting and putting out some feelers. So if you've used both systems and you have some feedback, please comment it down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. I need to sort of figure this out on my by my on my own. I guess like I don't want to spend the extra money and rent the Fujis. Uh, I'm, you know, if someone can just say like, hey, this you could do it just as well. Or I'm hearing a lot of instances where the Fuji, the way that it processes its color, is not necessarily the best. Even the lenses that the Fuji GFX system has, they're not as good as the lenses that Hasselblad has. So, you know, I don't know. I, I guess we'll just have to, I'll just have to wait and see and hopefully I get some good feedback. I'm asking around, so 
we'll see what happens and we'll see what hear what I hear back. Moving on from this, I did just want to quickly mention that after my shoot today, I did go straight to Sammy's because it is February 20th and the Fuji uh, X100V or X106 got announced. So I have the X100V here in my hands just to, you know, as a reference. And YouTube just sort of like bombarded me with all these videos today. And I got to sort of just see what all the people are saying about it. And I did not know that this thing had a 25 megapixel sensor in it. I, I mentioned it when I talked about it earlier that I didn't get it because of the sensor size. I got it because of its capability, you know, like being able to get some of those film emulations. Um, this is not a professional camera to me. I'm not using this on professional shoots. This is a fun walk around camera. This is like, this is what's going to sort of like give me that spark. I'm not going to shoot a campaign with this. Could I maybe do it? Yeah, but I'm not going to like, I want to sort of just, that's sort of like the fun point and shoot. You take out to parties and have fun with it. Like I'm not, it, it's not, it's not this guy. This guy can shoot billboards and get like insane detail and, a, and, you know, give you what you need out of, out of a photo shoot. This is just fun. And yeah, I put in my order, my pre-order for the Fuji X106. Hopefully if I'm lucky, I will have it next Wednesday on February 28th. So far, I think that there's some sort of embargo on what the content creators out there can showcase with the autofocusing system. They, I, they are saying that it's better, but they're not saying how good it is, is it. And so I'm sure as soon as that embargo lifts, I'm sure that there's going to be some creators out there that are going to be sharing what the viewfinder looks like when you're focusing onto certain objects or people. They're saying that it's a that it's the same system from another camera in the Fuji lineup. So if it is, and it's even if it's slightly better than this, like the autofocus in this thing is not great. What I do know is that when I'm trying to autofocus with this, with the digital viewfinder, it takes me much longer. It's not able to track faces in darker situations. And I know that because I shoot a lot of sort of like flash photography with this. So if I am in darker situation, I'm just using the live view viewfinder and sort of just using like the little green square within the viewfinder to focus. And I'm always using it on single shot autofocus to that way I can sort of focus and then reposition my shot and get what I need. So nonetheless, I'm excited to get my hands on it. I think that it's going to be a great upgrade, just upgrading from a 25 megapixel to a 40 megapixel sensor. I think it's going to be a nice jump. Nothing changed on the camera physically, which I love. I, I was hoping that they wouldn't, they wouldn't change much on it. They did add IBIS, which makes the camera a little bit heavier, which I don't mind. It's, it's not a huge difference from what I hear, so I'm not, I'm not, that's not a big deal for me. Um, they did add better video in the camera, which is fine. I think it's like cool to just be able to capture stuff when you're out and about with family. Again, this it's not a professional camera. It's a a point and shoot camera, use it as such. This this was my when I got this, this was my alternative to the to the Leica Q2. So it was, so instead of spending six grand on a Q2, I, I bought this and, and I'm just as happy with it. I think the Q2 at the time was sort of just as clunky, you know, with the autofocus that wasn't great. But the quality out of that camera was way better than what this thing shoots. So I think this new sensor and this new one is just going to bring up that quality. I think what we can take away from this episode is that I spent way too much money in the last week. So I'm probably just going to like crawl into a cave and just edit for a couple weeks and not come out. If you're watching this now, there's probably a recording of a live, a live stream that I did over the weekend uh, of the, the portrait photo shoot. I did release my first preset on Patreon. I called it Make It Nasty because the the photos that this thing put out were so clean that I wanted to dirty them up. So I added like, it's a black and white preset. I added a lot of grain. I love the sort of like grays and texture that I, that I got out of it. And I did use it on a couple photos. I haven't shot the live stream yet. That That's probably up on my Patreon, but I, I'm imagining that I probably used that preset 
a good amount of times in the live stream. I hope I'm hoping that I probably made a color version of that of that preset during the live stream because black and white's amazing. I love black and white photos, but I do think that we needed a color version of the photos. And then also one without any grain because grain is cool, but you know, I think that you know, I think I think you add grain to images to sort of get texture and, and a feel from them. Like, I don't know. It's it's sort of the trend now to just add grain to a bunch of stuff. Like people like shooting with higher ISO films during the day and pushing them uh, two stops or three stops to get like, you know, the same feel during the day as they would in darker scenarios. It's It's a weird sort of time that we're living in, to be honest. So looking forward down the line, now that I've done these three shoots and I have these three shoots under my belt, I think that I, I definitely want to do a real estate a real estate shoot and do photo and video for a real estate property. That should be something that I don't have to pay for. That should be something that I should be able to find a real estate agent or a real estate company to be willing to trade me their time to let me use their property in exchange for photos and videos. So I'm hoping that that's the case and I'm not going to have to come out a shitload of money to do this because cause that that sort of content doesn't necessarily benefit me as much as it would benefit the real estate company or the real estate agent. So I'm hoping that I can find someone to let me use a property to be able to do that. I'd love to shoot a music artist. Right now I'm sort of emailing artists at Coachella since I'm probably going to be out there for work. So I'm hoping that I can sort of meet up with someone Sort of just do like a quick shoot, like not even like a a quick meeting meet and greet and just do like a 30 minute shoot with someone. You know, I sort of have my hopes up for that. It might not happen, to be honest. Nonetheless, I'll figure out a way to get a camera inside the venue if I don't get a press pass and shoot shoot the festival. I mean, this might be the perfect camera right here to do it like. Uh, the new Fuji, I'll probably take the new Fuji, but when this thing doesn't have this lens hood on it, like I've talked about how small this camera is, like this thing can just fit in my pocket. So I'll probably just take this thing with me and the lens isn't removable. So it doesn't sort of like break any of their rules. The new camera takes bigger pictures. So I might be able to get, you know, better image quality and I'll just sort of shoot, walk around, shoot people, shoot you know, the festivities going around, around going on around me. Um, so that might be cool. And then I think one last one, obviously, I think everyone's waiting for me to do a sexier shoot. And so I haven't talked to this person yet, but I the first Maxim model that I work, worked with was Joanna Gomez. And I, I love Joe. She's been a friend of mine for a really long time. And maybe... What we can do is set up a beat shoot with her. And I think, you know, just do, I think what everyone wants to see is like a bikini beat shoot with a model. I think that's sort of what I'm known for and that's what I'm good at. So I think that's, you know, it would be sort of like an easy way to sort of maybe get people to get, come over to the Patreon. And I think that might be like my July project. So that might be like the first project that people end up paying for so i think that patreon has been really attracted attractive to me because there's sort of like a immediate sort of feedback there i'm not getting a lot of it now i think right now i'm sort of enjoying the process of creating and doing all this stuff on my own as i'm sort of learning the process and trying to find a rhythm of how this is supposed to go and honestly learning how to balance this with work as well. So I know that this doesn't get in, in the way of what actually makes me money. But my overhead costs and what I need to sort of make monthly for me to sort of like live and sort of like live comfortably. I don't even feel comfortable saying this, <clears throat> but fuck it. N not a lot of people listen to the podcast anyway. So I'm just going to say it. So in order, like my overhead cost monthly is about 10 grand. So I need to make 10 grand a month to be able to pay rent, pay all my bills, uh, make sure that I continue, you know, just sort of like cover all my bases. So in order for me to hit that number with Patreon subscribers, 
I need to get 2,000 Patreon subscribers. It doesn't sound like a big number. Compared to my Instagram following, it doesn't sound like a big number. Now, I am one of those people that can't sort of get my Instagram following to come over to anywhere. And I'm not necessarily sure why. Like, I think the algorithm, I think my algorithm does really good when I post photos of women. So that's why I think that that shoot with Joe down the line will do really great when I do the bikini photos with her. But, you know, until then, shooting cars and shooting beauty photos and shooting real estate, <laughs> it's not, that type of shit is not going to get people over to my Patreon. So I'm doing this for me, you know, like, I guess that this is sort of like, I have to start viewing it like like movie stars do. And I'm not comparing myself to a fucking movie star, so relax. But I'm just meaning in the fact that, like, people, movie stars have talked about doing one, like, doing a movie for the industry so they can do, like, a passion project for them. So maybe I'm going to have to start doing that with Patreon is sort of, like, doing one for me and then doing one for the people that that follow me. I don't want to alienate anyone. I know that it's what everyone, it's time. So like, I know it, you guys are taking the time to listen to this, to watch this. And I'm very appreciative that you guys would give me that time. And I'm even more appreciative to the people that go over to my Patreon and sign up there because they're not only just giving me their time, but they're also paying me. And I think that that's sort of, you know, there's a little bit of guilt that, that comes along with that because I, I, want to feel that I'm giving you guys what's worth your money. You know, it's it's scary and even just thinking about it like is definitely a little bit scary, but you know, I think that in a perfect world for me, it'll all sort of end up working together and I I have to sort of just continue to keep doing things that are fun. Like the last three shoots have been super fun. Like and and I've been able to check off something off my bucket list like driving Aston Martin fucking check that shit off like my favorite car I did a, a project when I was in college on the Aston Martin DBS so I made like a magazine on the Aston Martin DBS and I fucking love that car it's still on my bucket list to drive but closest thing to it was the Aston Martin Vantage and I got to drive that fucking bright blue car around LA for a day so I can't complain it was great it's been a lot of fun to be able to do these projects again I am very fortunate to be in this position. I don't think I show my emotions anymore as I, as much as I used to, but the little kid inside of me is definitely jumping up and down and you know, I'm I'm very very happy with how everything has turned out up to this point, especially with shoot to ill, you know, with the branding, with how it's going on Patreon. I don't have a lot of subscribers. I'm not like you know, that's not the goal. I'm not trying to grow it quickly. I'm just trying to sort of like grow it in a way that I feel comfortable in. Because if it were to grow quickly, then I, then that would be stressful. And I'm not trying to stress myself out, you know. this. Get, I'm happy with like, I'm happy with the few subscribers that I have now. And, and I am grateful for each and every one of them. So yeah, thank you guys for listening. I hope that you guys took something away from this podcast. Sorry for rambling on a lot about my inner child <laughs> but yeah i appreciate you guys listening if you're watching this on youtube please like subscribe comment share the video it'll help the podcast grow and if you're listening to this on apple Podcasts or spotify please leave us a good review i'll talk to you guys soon keep shooting peace